Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. I'm back on this side again. Um, <clears throat> I realize that the inventory is over here, and so while I do cover up Wayne uh, and a bit of pun, a bit of Datus Moln, but I figured that that was okay. It's kind of awkward going around these curves with uh, the D-pad or the arrow keys, rather. Though I guess that this game was. Technically made for nice. Let's finish it out up here, though. Uh, technically made for um, something. I I bet. Help me. What was it made for? This is a game with controller support. Um, which means that it's not crazy to have a. Uh... Damn, that is such a cool. Oh boy. I gotta kill you now. I just wanted to check and see what was going on. Close. But no cigar. Now you're charging up. Um. Let's have you heal. Actually. Let's see if we can't stop your charge up. Graft. What? Well, that's another full heal. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Just kill me. Get it over with. I'll cut it and come back here. All right, we're back in. While I was gone, I checked my messages uh, because the loading screens are relatively consistent with uh, with uh, this, you know? Right, gotta jump. Use the boat. Alright. So what are your guys' deal? Your foes assemble. I, I can kill these guys easier. I, I, I should stop blowing my stuff on them. I don't think Data Small can kill him, and yeah, that's annoying. Like, is there even a point to trying to kill them? Oh yeah, I put 25 meat in the machine as well. The loading screens are jarring, man. RPG Maker had pretty solid loading screens, I will say. Man, the idea of... I, I, I even think I joked at one point that, like, any game is better with an air dash. And I was talking about, like, a Guilty Gear or a, like, a Devil May Cry-styled air dash. What's this, then? Juice. But, like, here we are. Really gotta, like, put my money out. Another thing is that having an air dash or having a sprint or anything like that means that you need to have a larger game world to support that sort of thing. And like, I don't know if I need this game world to be larger. I guess it is kind of cool that it looks like this, that it plays and works like this, but like, I don't know. I think you just wait. So what's this? 
The paper cup. That was a whole thing last time. Okay. Oh, those just go back and forth. Okay. Okay. Let's snap you. I would really love a wide hitting move. Damn you guys. I say wide hitting move, but I don't think that's a thing. I mean like a like a thing that targets a crowd. Now that we know that they can do that, we should uh, seek to stop them from doing that. Who's getting it? You are. Oh boy. Um, let's... Let's try foam armor. Not on Pongorma. Interesting, it's like a fidget spinner. Big health buff, yeah. Right, let's kill you. And then with your big health, let's kill you. So his... Oh boy. I'm still foamed though, so that's good. Gosh. Come on. Oh, that reminds me. I might be able to, um... Attack the, uh, Ectrolan or whatever it's called. Try to put everyone to sleep. The problem is, is that means that, um... The Cave Sinast will be able to, uh... Regenerate health while we're sleeping. And I'll just get more poisoned. No, oh, Pongorma's dead. It's a pretty hard fight here. So let's try this Soul Sponge. Interesting. What is that? I don't know if I recognize that. I feel like I recognize that enemy, though. He was like a, a guy. Sorry, I know that that's not very helpful. I think it was... I remember what it was. It was that dude who was walking around in the first game. Sorry, I'm playing really bad. I'm like spreading out my moves. I'm doing everything you're not supposed to really do in a JRPG. Because I don't want to attack him. I don't want to attack the extra land. Uh oh. Well, I'll be right back again. Alright, we're back in. I've got to say that, uh... The, like, time that that takes is kind of getting on my nerves. Okay. So I'm thinking... We hit you with Soul Crisper. And then on Pongorma's term... Did I say term? We lightning this thing. I think I can see the bones in there. And then while that thing's asleep, it should take more damage. And because we just got out of the thing. We're clean. And then we can do that to you as well.
cool. And then we'll start working on you, huh? Oh, damn it. I was really hoping that it would burn and die before it had a chance to come back. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. I think it can only cast that once, though. Yeah, and he's awake as well, so that's good. I guess I'll just snap on you, then. Oh, that's so annoying. I feel like I'm tunneling here. Like, I have to dig through his health with a pickaxe, you know? Like, I'm- I'm lo- this is a DPS race and I'm losing it. He can outheal my ability to actually, like, damage him. Oh, Wayne's dead. I don't know how that happened or when. This is going terrible, might I say. All right, let's see if I can't bust out a thing. Oh, that's useful. Pool wine. The residue of a pool man. Grants mania to the target, increasing power and will. Side effects will follow. It's so my second soul sponge use. So yeah, I think that thing... Do you remember the guy who was like flipping switches in the first game? I think that's him. Okay, I got a soul crisp you. Okay. Now let's see here. Do I have any attacking things? Let's stem cell you, huh? Oh, that's so cool. Hmm. This is like hard, man. This is harder than I was expecting. Okay, so that's just his automatic counter, but that's not the same thing as his attack. Yes, that's good. Because I really just want to kill him, you know? I've already used a lot of items on this. And I, I that was like a total botch as well. Like, I totally botched it like twice. Very irritating. Yeah, I wonder if the mechanic of like... Killing bugs as Snom with like Snom's known in the party to get her glove upgraded is gonna be a thing. Cause it'd be kind of annoying because they totally let you like burn all the bugs now. And like it was kind of annoying to go back and get all of the things. Like cause if you wanted to upgrade Snom Snowna totally, you had to go you had to backtrack totally. So let's try saving here, huh? I am Vuax. I presume you intend to seize my guests. Odozair granted me the strength to oppose such meddling. None will pre prevent High Hylum Xylum. Hylum Xylum. Anticipate your demise. Okay. Let's start off with that on you. Not a huge amount of health, which is good. Alright, and then I'm thinking Wayne and Pongo are just going to start snapping Tyros. Man, what a sentence, am I right, guys? Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start buffing health. Starting to get some heals off. 
Okay, cool. I really wanted that to be a two-hit kill. I'm very happy it was. Okay, Data's Bone can come in with one more. One more heal. I guess it should go to him, like, himself. Nice. Tyra's doing a charge up. You gotta die. Vuex does sharp fingers. Ugh, creepy. Leaking. I guess that's the, like, how they would write bleeding. So how does... Okay. By the way, this track, it's pretty good. Cool. Start working on you. Let's finish off you. I'm thinking that's probably going to be a good use of my of my energy here. Spiky radius. This. Okay, this keeps happening, but Hylix two keeps going into not responding. Like, I, I don't know why. I think it's just, like, whenever certain... Okay, hopefully I don't get counter damage for that, because I just realized how spiky it is. And it might kill me. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff in Hylix 2 that, like, just causes the game to load, like, slowly or, or freak out. I'm not sure why. I guess it's just because... I mean, maybe the game's poorly optimized. Jail key and muscle applique. Cool. I think I'm going to give it to Pon Gorma and buff him up further. And that jail key will let me go downstairs to the jail. And then step on that button down there, right? Well, I saw a thing over here that I want. Empty. I have no idea where that's supposed to be. Well. <laughs> Funny. Oh, a coiny. So, I still have no idea what the hell Data Smolten's supposed to be. Because, like, Pongorma says that he's a knight, and it kind of looks like he has a little helmet on. And Wayne is a guy with a leather jacket and a moon head. Which makes sense, because we know that Gibby is a similar thing. Let's take a look at that muscle applique. Probably increases power. You're getting it. Jail key? What are you? I am Blurro, the Magnate of New Muldol. I should have figured that the thing that has a unique uh, sprite would be important. What brings you to my humble abode? We discuss your case with Vuax, and he agreed to commute your sentence. It's wonderful news. I'm eager to return to my throne. Join me in the palace, and I will reward you amply. <laughs> Funny. Captain spoke of an edifix. Highland is island. They meant to raise it via prescribed gestures. Stop by my cafe when you return to town. Cool. Hylum Xylem. They talk about reviving that thing as well, but I thought that only um, Gibby needed to be revived. Revived. Bounce pad. Gotta say it, apparently it's the law. Oh god. Why?
Hylum Xylem. I mean, it sounds like they're mispronouncing Hymen. And then maybe Xylophone. I mean, it's probably just nonsense words. I hate this. Oh my god. Like, part of it is because I'm rushing, because I want to save time, but it's a well-known fact that nothing wastes more time than saving time. I don't suppose there's a, there's a button I could just hit to go to the map. I mean, there might even be. But, um... I think the thing in my inventory, the crystal, just sends me back to the afterlife, which is kind of annoying. You know, Hylix has always been weird, but this is this one is weird for unusual reasons. Like I talked about, like the nerve of having like weird long load times in a in a Hylix game. Like, say what you will about RPG Maker, but it's pretty decently optimized. You're going to get a, a, a decent, like, thing out of it, you know? All right, so let's find that guy's cafe. I think I have RPG Maker. I've always wanted to make something in it, but, like... It's really hard for me to learn. I don't know why. I think it's just I'm at a point in my life where, like, trying to learn a new skill is really difficult for me. And not even because I'm old, I'm just, uh, like, poorly medicated for the stuff happening in my brain. All comes down to thoughtful use of comestibles. We meet pool man, burning is effective. Burrito and muscle applique. Tastes like this, you wish you had an organ fort. Oh, they only have the one. That's okay. I've heard bones as a way to refer to um, money before, but... I don't know. Maybe that's just weird. So what's this thing? Have I been in here? Stem cell and cupcake. And some coins. Oh, that's your upstairs, I see. Well, your double upstairs, I guess. So this is just the opening part of Moldol that I don't think I went into very hard. Pardon my voice, by the way. I'm coming off of that sickness that I had in Slay this... At, uh, what was I playing? Salt and Sanctuary was what I was playing, I think. Um, for those who watched my Satan, Salt and Sanctuary playthrough. Hey, Stem Stemden Molnar, whatever his name is, is gone. Hmm. One wonders why. Anyway, yeah, I cough a couple of times during my Salt and Sanctuary LP. Uh, I'm still getting over that thing. It's a virus, so you know it takes forever to get over. Uh, it wasn't COVID. I maintained my ability to taste and didn't have any of the other symptoms. There was something going around my town. Heat me a sun. That's what I tell my cat whenever I want him to come sit on my feet. Because I don't wear socks in my house. And it's winter. It's been something of a warm winter so far, but that might change. Artisanal Cathamite Husbandry. So you might imagine there's great synergy with glove, glove lathing. So, if you haven't seen a wood turning video, I can only assume you don't have ASMR. For real, though. Um, I believe lathing is just a... Like, wood turning, if you haven't seen it, is just you put a, a, a thing of wood... On a little, on a little spinny thing, and then carve it as it as it spins around and around. Um, and I believe that's a form of lathing. Uh, Wayne, thanks for your assistance at Viewax's edifice. Unfortunately, a new crisis is upon us. Long ago, when the tyrant Gibby was defeated, a remnant survived and came to our possession. 
We called it the Gibbylet, and finding it indestructible, we hit that dread residue in a remote vault. Last, the vault's location was coerced from us by the agents of Otoziar, who now works to unseal it. Take the dock key. In the northwest corner of this town is a stair to the airship dock. The vehicle will allow you to reach the vault's location south of here on the island of Foglast. Take airship manual. We'll hold it in your inventory if you need a control summary. The vault is likely being opened at this very moment. A cutscene. Yes. Cool. Yeah, I don't know if um that one guy in the in the first game who was flipping switches to and for those who don't remember, between acts or chapters, there would be a little guy that would run around flipping switches, and it would spell out Act 1, Act 2, and The End. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and I think The End. Or no, I think you hit the switch that activates The End. But yeah, I, I never knew what that was supposed to be, or who it was. Those evil wanes? There's a wind advisory as well. Our knowledge of fog glass is limited. A force field surrounds it and you'll need to deactivate it. Man. This is a, this is a real video game. Also, I'm not sure how I feel about Hylix being made longer. The original game I beat in... Um, what did I beat? Let me check that. I beat Hylix 1 in about three-ish hours, and I did a second playthrough that was uh, an hour, two and a half hours. Um, and if you don't go and find all the spells or all the paper cups... Um, I also did a specific thing in my second playthrough of Hylix 1. Lost airships can be resummoned at the island northeast of New Moldol, reachable by air dashing. You passed it. I did, in fact. Thank you. Um, anyway. I did a thing where I didn't... Uh, level up or what whoa this is unusual I'm again blown away Anyway, yeah, I did a thing in Hylix 1 where um, I didn't level up or get any of the items or paper cups or any of the spells until after I had um, gotten all the uh, all the like spells, uh, all the party members to make sure that I wouldn't have a party member who was weaker because they had come in late. Um... So, like, if you know where you're going and... Ah, oh, crap. Oh, that's fine. So, if you know where you're going... You can probably beat the game in two hours. And it's kind of interesting to... Um, whoops. It's kind of interesting to have a short RPG like that. Man, so Wow. So I guess this is one reason why they had to make the, the thing 3D. And I guess this is also why loading uh, loading times are a concern. Because the game has to be, like... Capable to render this in this viewpoint. This is really cool and really weird. And very unusual. Like, this is something that you could not do in, um, RPG Maker. Like, they even have an airship in RPG Maker, but... You couldn't do it like this. You couldn't zoom in and run around the map in 3D. Like, God, oh, that could be its own game. Oh, uh-oh. 
please. Okay, that's good. I really, really do dislike trying to navigate like this. So Darkest Dungeon 2 recently came out, and Darkest Dungeon, of course, uh, is well-liked. Um, and I've even played it on this channel. Darkest Dungeon 1, that is, I've played on this channel. I've not gotten a chance to play 2 yet. I was kind of thinking about waiting for the Steam release. Um, but Darkest Dungeon 2 is a very interesting sequel because... Like, everything that Darkest Dungeon 1 had is changed in DD2. Like, almost everything is completely exchanged for a different but similar game mechanic. Um, which is not what this actually is. This is something different. This, like, reminds me of when, like, you would get a game that came out on the PS1. And it was cool and it was great and it was fun and it was fine and it worked. And then later you would get a game on the PS2 that was a sequel and you'd be like, oh my god, this is, wow, you know? Or, like, um, a game on the SNES. Like, I could maybe see something like Hylix making it to the SNES, okay? And then, and then on the PS1, you know? That's the kind of graphical jump that's happened here. The juice box. Like, compare, like, um... Super Castlevania 4 to Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh, it's Tom Snona. Good. Uh, Wayne, help me out here. Uh, yes, ma'am. Again, Tom Snona, very, very soft-spoken and, in fact, hardly at all spoken. She doesn't say a whole lot. Couchured, truculent, and pool man. Okay, I'm thinking that... Wow, Tom Snona's got a lot of stuff going on. I don't know what Data Simone's purpose is. All right, let's just do a normal snap-o. Because, like, that was something I always felt. Because Data Simone, because, like, Snom Stone is kind of the mage. Wave Artifice. 80% normal damage to all enemies. If charged, two additional attacks. How do I charge? Hmm, that's unfortunate. So hoping to use a move. Although I do really enjoy um, stuff where somebody, like somebody who is defending, gets put higher in like the aggro queue. Reactive shield. Involuble, does that say? Wow, it is windy outside. I can see a bush shaking. Either that or somebody's hiding in there. Let's try you, huh? Blocked. But the shield is ended. Let's lightning you, then. Sleep spores. Oh, I just realized I haven't saved. And I haven't found a thing to stake my to stake my thing down. Pool wine. Alright, let's pop one of these bad boys on then. <laughs> Very interesting. I'll do a foam armor on you, I think. So let's see. Wave artifice. Interesting.
Because, yeah, Snob Summoner was like the mage. And then Wayne, Wayne was all around, and Datus Moln was like the tank or melee DPS. Or Pongorma was the tank or melee DPS. And I never knew what Datus Moln was supposed to be doing, you know? Right, let's Soul Crisp you now. I'm glad I learned what Involuble means. Truculent. Let's assuredly kill you. And then I guess we'll just start snapping you, huh? Oh, it has a counter. That's annoying. Oh, that's gnarly. Scary face. Hmm. I guess I'll eat it. So maybe Data Small, now that he's defending, can survive this hit. Ooh, just barely. Temporal wasting. Lagging. I guess it's like slow. Reactive shield, huh? Wayne's got a decent amount of health. He might be able to take it, but if not, damn, just too much. That's okay. It's dead. And we have got the stuff. Thanks. They hid themselves in the giant juice beast egg and were able to under enter this place uncontested. Those are agents of Odozer. They're known to rely on such subterfuge. Behold, they shed a key. And the warm room key. This should unlock their clandestine facility to the north. Ever since it went up, they've been trying to displace this ranch. Then that is our next destination. A lot more dialogue this time as well. And again, this is Slam Snow's couch, I guess. Pleather gauge. Oh, shoot. I just remembered. One reason why... um. One reason why uh, Data Simone's been doing so bad is that he doesn't have gloves, of course. Okay, so now everyone's been brought up a little bit more permanently. Yeah, I just remember that buying equipment is a thing that I have to do. I totally forgot about that. Normally, finding equipment was sufficient in Hylix 1. Uh-huh. Fate Sandbox. And that just lets me do it again. Huge extension cord. They're great, but not always necessary. How's everyone's health? Bad. Interesting that they would double down on the glove stuff. Like, because obviously finger snapping was an iconic part of Hylix 1. Weird. I've worked as a Calthamite motivator, a sympathetic jumper, and a contract extruder. I finally settled on juice ranching. A lot of folk nowadays don't even know where juice comes from. Feel the frequency? Expect this one will be ready soon. It's like a weird organ that just comes out of the earth. There are also bugs here. I kind of miss the spell Space Shurikens. That was a cool spell. So, they said to the north. Oh. They meant it as well. 
uh, I'm going to save right here. And I'm going to cut this episode. I've been Alfred. This has been Hylix 2. Uh, I hope you all have a good day. Thank you all for coming. Bye.